Hello, I'm Richard Malchik and I'm one of the consultants at R&D Tax. I'm chatting to Jasmine Tagerson, co-founder and COO at Hormona, a high-tech startup that's recently benefited from our Giving Back program. Hi, Jasmine, how are you? Hi, Richard, I'm great, how are you? Yeah, really good, thank you. Good to see you. And Jasmine, can you give us an overview of Hormona? Tell us a bit about what the business does and how many employees you have, how you're funding the business and, and whether R&D claims were part of this process. Yeah, sure. Um, so Hormona um, is a company that helps women take control of their hormones. Um, we've invented a test that allows women to test their hormones from the comfort of their home without the need for a lab. Um, so there has obviously been a lot of R&D going on. Um, we are currently around seven employees, including myself and my co-founder, and then we have a couple of part-time people. Um, you know, we're still pre-launch, so, you know, we don't have any turnover yet. Um, so the way we've been funded is through private investments. Uh, we actually just closed a small, uh, not small round, a round of funding at, uh, at about 1.2 million pounds um the other week so that's really really good um but the r d claim tax claim has been super helpful to us because there is a lot of r d and so you know just knowing that we had a little bit coming back there has kept us afloat um when it was a bit tough yeah that's really good to hear it sounds very very exciting and it sounds like a really fast growing business tell us a bit about the research and development work that you did yeah um, so in our case, we've only really had one R&D project, and that is to develop these tests. Um, and because our tests are completely cutting out the need for a lab, we're using both the physical tests and then image processing. So there's been a lot of things that had to be worked out, both from a literature kind of R&D perspective, understanding what the best sample matrix was, um, how we you know, get the highest sensitivity, which assays to use. So there's been a lot of screening going on from that point of view. Um, and then, you know, testing of the products, the different materials involved in creating the highest sensitivity that we can get. And then also making sure that it could be read by mobile camera, different lighting conditions. So yeah, it's been, been a lot of things going on and we've been working on this test for almost a year and a half now. And we've still got another two phases left. So we're still probably another, six months or so away from launch. Wow, it, it sounds really complex, a real mix <laughs> of science and technology here. Um, the future, it's the future, right? <laughs> excellent, yes, indeed. So tell me, do you think you could have made the correct judgments for your R&D claim without advice? No, I think your, your advice would have been extremely helpful. Um, and you know, with everything else that's going on in a startup, I don't even think we would have had the, the, the time or focus to put this together without the support of R&D tax. It's just, it would have fallen between the chairs of something else. And then it would have been something like, oh, we should, we should do this thing. But without knowing and without the structure that you guys have provided, I, I don't think we really would have done it at all. Okay, good. And, and were you happy with the outcome of the R&D claim? Yeah, super happy. Um, I mean, we got back just under 14 grand, which was super happy and, you know, super happy about that, super helpful. Um, and, you know, it may not sound like a lot of money, but to a startup like us, that's, that's you know, payroll for another month. Yeah, yeah, key, key to keeping things going. Exactly. Um, how long did the claims process take? Uh, that's a good question. We were a bit slow with our accountants. We, you know, were messing about with our year end to try and get as much in as possible. But I think since like once we finally started working on it, it was a matter of a couple of weeks, I think. I mean, you probably know better than me. Yeah, yeah I think it was it was a pretty quick process. Yeah, so it, was, it, was... it wasn't long at all. It was it was very, very quick. And I mean, we had great support from you. I mean, you kind of talked me through the whole process. And then once that was done, we had prepped a bit of it beforehand as well, which, you know, if for anyone else doing this, I would recommend doing as much as the legwork up front. And you were, you know, you were the one advising us on doing that, you know, writing and filling everything else out as you went and like starting early. Um, so that was very helpful as well. So when it came around to it, once we finally did our year end, most of it was already there. So it's just about kind of inputting the numbers and, and kind of making sure it was right. Yeah, yeah, cool. 
Um, so how has the experience of claiming R&D tax credits impacted your plans? I mean, will they play a part of future funding? Um, I, I don't know if it's changed our plans, but it's definitely something we will, you know, continue to do for as long as we do any kind of R&D work. Um, you know, every penny matters. So, you know, whatever we can do to be more cost efficient and cut down our tax bill is something that we're going to do. And we still clearly have a lot of R&D that's happened in this financial year and, and probably into the next. So we're definitely going to be doing it again. Yeah, great. And how likely are you to recommend R&D tax? Super likely. I think I've already recommended you to three or four people. Um, so I will continue to do that. <laughs> that's really good to hear. Uh, and that's probably a great place to, to finish our conversation. So thank you, uh, Jasmine, for, for our little talk and uh, look forward to working with you on, on your next claim. Same here. Thank you, Richard.